Okay, you know there are some things in life, whether it be secrets or tips or tricks that you have, which you don't really wanna share with anyone else because they are so good and really set you apart. Today, I don't even know why, I guess it's because I love you. I'm sharing with you some of my biggest tips and really secrets that I hold close to me for learning things, being able to memorize things technically and not forget them. Let's dive into it. I need to sit down. All right, before we begin, I feel like I never wear my glasses when I film because I feel like you can see the reflection. We're gonna go with it though. I need my glasses today. All right, let's dive into it. When it comes to technical information that you are consuming, does it ever feel as though you are consuming it but then in an instant you forget it? Or maybe you just even are consuming it and you're not really registering what you are consuming. It feels like you're taking in all this great information, you really want to focus and memorize different technical things. Maybe you're not even a technical person but you want to have a better understanding of technology. And consuming, especially right now with all AI and machine learning, I know for me, one of the things I noticed when I wasn't using the techniques I'm going to share with you when I was learning more so about generative AI, I would consume all this information, read all these articles, and the next day, if someone was to ask me one thing about it, it was gone. It was like I never, like I completely wasted my time consuming this information about technology only to have it completely disappear the following day. First, before we dive into these techniques, we need to really understand exactly how memory works. It really typically works off of three main functions, one being encoding, storage, and retrieval. So step one is encoding, and this is really when it's the initial stage of learning. So it's when your brain starts translating the information into a construct that can be stored. This is then followed by storage, which is the process of maintaining the information over time. And then finally, next up is retrieval, which of course is the ability to access the stored information when it's needed. So what is it about technical information though that makes it even more difficult to retain this information? Oftentimes, the reasons for this is because it's more complex, especially when it comes to vocabulary. When you think about the technical topics that you have learned, oftentimes they are with words that we don't use in our everyday. So unlike things that are everyday information or things that you can relate to everyday information, oftentimes when we are learning something technical, if we don't relate it to everyday information, it's going to be easier for us to lose that information. All right, let's dive into one of the first ways that I really utilize or first methods I utilize when learning new technical things. Once again, this isn't even if you are a technical person, it's just if you are someone who is passionate about technology and wants to ramp up at a quicker speed. But if you're a technical, this is really helpful for you too. I use this a lot and in this example I'll share with you I do it when I am learning a new programming language so this it's kind of a horrible methodology name, but it's called chunking. And it's a cognitive strategy that essentially involves breaking down complex information into smaller, well, chunks. And this method can be super effective, especially when it comes to technical topics. As I mentioned earlier, oftentimes with technical topics, because they feel so large and honestly never ending, like it's just feeling like you peel back one layer of the onion, of the book of the onion and then there's another layer and it just keeps on going so this is methodology is really useful for technical learning so let's use the example of learning a new programming language so when you are learning a new programming language instead of trying to understand the entire syntax all at once and memorize absolutely everything you can chunk this information into different kind of sections so one might be variables one might be loops functions data structures, you get the point. And by organizing these learnings into different kinds of sections, say functions versus loops, it will actually help your brain to be able to really retrieve that information and associate it with something in that package. When we're just consuming information and trying to learn everything and memorize everything at once, it almost is, you can think of it like spaghetti, like spaghetti coat, it gets jumbled up. Whereas if you're sectioning things into these chunks using this chunking method, your brain is easier or will have a better time retrieving that information, going back to how memory works by using these chunking methods. Oh, I hate the word chunking, it's so terrible. Now you won't forget it though. Okay, the next one I do, which is really great for any visual learners out there and want to memorize things in a visual way, is it's actually just called, or I call it anyways, creating mental images or stories. Stories have such a powerful impact on our memory. It is much easier for us as humans to be able to recall a certain story because it has those different feelings and emotions attached, attached to it versus trying to memorize something that is pure scientific, pure technical. So how do we merge both worlds together? You are learning and memorizing something technical, but you need to apply it to a story. 
For this, what I love to do, and I do a lot of little videos on this as well, is I will associate what I am learning that is technical back with a real world example. Okay, so let me give this example I, I just did the other day. Let's talk about a DDoS attack or a DDoS attack. When I was filming a video for this explaining what exactly this attack is, what I did was I gave it or associated it to a real world example. So in this case, I didn't even, wasn't even, we were not even talking about anything technical anymore. We were talking now about a coffee shop. Imagine if there was this coffee shop and then hundreds of people swarmed into your coffee shop and all they wanted to do there was stand around. They didn't want to make a purchase, didn't want to actually look. What does this do? This prevents your actual customers from coming in and making a purchase. So this example I just gave you is almost exactly what a DDoS attack is but there was nothing technical in that example. For DDoS, going back to this example, it's when there is so much traffic getting sent to your website that actual customers cannot access it. That's very simplified terms. We're not gonna dive into it in this video, but the point being is if you can find ways to associate these technical topics with real world examples, it will help you tremendously. Another tip on this note, if you are someone who's like, okay, Tiff, that's great, but how do I find these real world examples? Use AI, use ChatGPT, type into ChatGPT, uh, you know, I would like a real world example in story format on this technical term. I guarantee you, this is my favorite way to memorize new technical topics and I always now won't forget them as long as I do this because I can visualize, I have a story tied to it. It's so much more powerful. Okay, the third technique that I use is something called the mind palace. Some people call this the mind house or there's other terms for it as well. And essentially what this is, is in your mind, you have this spatial environment of, in this example, a palace. Some people use a house, some people use a garden, different kind of things that have structure to them. And what you can then do is create a simple mind palace for technical information. And you can start by envisioning a place you know well. So oftentimes when people say a palace, but you're really referring to your home, something that you're very familiar with. You know the rooms, you know the layout, different things like that. And actually what you do is you assign each room a category. So let's go through a real world example with this. So let's say we're memorizing computer components. So the kitchen could represent hardware filled with a mental image of say refrigerators as storage devices and say microwaves as CPUs. It's something you're very familiar with, but you're attaching it to something you're learning that is technical. Okay, let's do one more room. Let's do the living room. So say we're in a living room uh, and it symbolizes software. So the kitchen is hardware, now we're in the living room, which is software. And the books on your shelves, actually things that you have, physical items that you have. So if you don't have a bookshelf, don't try and pretend you have one. Think of something else you have that you can really instantly grab when you think of your living room. In this example though, let's use the bookshelves. So you have these bookshelves and within each book is different kinds of programs and applications. And what this will do is, this was actually taught to me when I was in, I think high school, when we were studying different things. And what it will do is when you're taking a test or going for that interview, or in this case, just wanting to pull from your memory something technical or a tech topic that is pretty broad or difficult to understand oftentimes, is you can go back into your little palace, <laughs> your mind palace, and start referencing, okay, the kitchen, something I'm very familiar with, being able to, to associate it with this technical topic. I know it sounds strange, and at first I was like, there's no way this is gonna work. But now I use it all the time, especially if I'm sitting down for an interview, whether it be, uh, you know, a recent interview I did about AI or generative AI, I knew they were going to ask me a lot of different technical questions, not as a, you know, can you ace this or not, but just genuine curiosity. And oftentimes when you're nervous, you get, you stumble over your words or you miss something you wish you wouldn't have. And by using this technique of having a mind palace, it really helps. Okay, those are my top three ways that I am able to really memorize technical topics at a very quick pace. And it's things that are really tangible that you could actually start actioning. It's not these kind of fluffy uh, takeaways where it's like, oh, just keep on learning. It will come with time. These are techniques that are proven by experts and really will help you memorize things at a quicker rate. I told you in this video, I was going to be sharing with you all the goods, all my secret tools that I use and uh, I did, so. I hope you find them valuable. I'm curious to hear though, if you have used any of these techniques, leave down in the comments. And also too, if you have other ones you suggest that you'd feel, you know, safe space in our community here, you're willing to share with us because I think the more that we can really learn from these techniques and find one that really works for you, one or two, it will make you such a better learner, better interviewer, better uh, conversationalist around tech in general.
All right, if you haven't, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, coding, career, all that good stuff. And I will see you soon. Thanks everyone.